So you want to edit your own gaming videos using DaVinci Resolve? Look no further. So a lot of you really liked my Premiere Pro tutorial, how I edit gaming videos with that, and I thought, well, nowadays I'm not using Premiere, I'm using Resolve instead, so why not make a tutorial on making gaming videos with Resolve instead? So here it is. Uh, I'm going to be treating you like an absolute beginner, like you've never used Resolve in your life. So sorry if I'm a bit patronising at times, but let's just get started. So I've opened up Resolve, you'll see this project manager window, and um, as you can see, I've tried to uh, record this. I've recorded this twice already a day, um, both of which took up quite a lot of my time and uh, the files corrupted. The file, Both times the files ended up corrupting. But not this time, because I'm localising my files onto this SD card instead of my computer. So, fingers crossed, third time to charm, everything should be fine. Let's get into this. So you're going to create a new project, I'm just going to call it Please don't corrupt. There we go. Please don't corrupt because I really don't want this this file to corrupt. This is going to be the one. So you're going to come to this screen right here at the bottom. You can just see there you've got seven different tabs. Quite a lot, I know, but we're going to jump into edit the third one along. Um, in this tutorial, we're also going to be working with color, fairlight, and deliver. You're always going to work with deliver anyways because that's the final rendering tab. Uh, so we've got edit here. Let's break this down. So up here you've got your media pool This is where all your raw clips are gonna go before you drag them in the timeline to edit uh, to cut and rearrange whatever you want This is your preview window your source code monitor whatever you want to call it And this is your inspector which is gonna allow you to change attributes about the clip and the audio uh, Down here you've got effects if you don't have that you can just click on effects library up here You can choose what to show and what not to show up here with these four tabs and let's get into this I'm gonna drag the clips I want to use for this tutorial in the media pool here now I'm gonna be importing this Valorant footage and uh, when I ask this click don't change because I'm gonna show you what project settings you should have in a second by a second I mean now so we're gonna come up to uh, where is it file we're gonna go project settings and we're going to make sure that under master settings here, this is really important, your timeline resolution needs to be 1920 by 1080 HD. This is the resolution of the clip, um, which means that 1920, 1920 is the amount of pixels wide it's going to be, and the height is going to be 1080 pixels. You want to on pixel aspect ratio square. Uh, you don't have to have 1920 by 1080, but make sure that it's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, because that is the default YouTube video player resolution. Uh, timeline frame rate, if you do know what frame rate you recorded in, just match it up to that. But if not, then anything above 23.976 should be fine. And I'm just going to click cancel there. And now we can get into dragging our clips into the timeline. Right now I have a face cam clip, which contains both my audio and the game's audio. And I have a background clip here, which contains just the game's audio. So I'm going to rearrange the uh, clips to be one above the other using the mouse just to drag them and I'm going to use alt and scroll to zoom out now I'm going to show you some of the tools you can use if you press B you're going to get blade B for blade easy to remember and you can just click anywhere to cut the clip like that I'm going to control Z to undo or another way to cut is if I press A to deselect the blade and just select the normal cursor here as you can see and I go anywhere on the timeline right uh, I don't have anything selected I press control and the button next to the Z can see it cuts through the like, every single clip on the timeline if i press ctrl z to get rid of that you can um, specialize it to a certain clip by selecting it just click it normally Control button next to the z it only clips that section there and uh, yeah that's pretty useful to use if you want to like um you know cut here and then cut here and then cut here and here and then you just want to get rid of that and get rid of that it's very useful to use so i'm going to control z all of that okay now say you have a section here you want to get rid of okay Ooh. how could you get rid of this you could select them all press backspace to delete them select the empty space that you have and press backspace again and you can see it fills the gap or if I control Z there and then control Z again you could highlight the clip and press delete not backspace delete is gonna ripple delete the clip which means that the clips in front are gonna try and fill the space that you've just gotten rid of I'm gonna control Z that control Z that control Z that and uh, what else oh yeah so if you have a cut here and a cut here and a cut here and a cut here for example and you want to put something in between this this section and this section you want to put something in here you can 
press Alt and Y, which is going to select everything in front of where you put your cursor. So now you can see everything ahead of this is selected. I can just drag it out the way and put in whatever I've got to put in. Very useful yet again. I'm going to Control Z all of that. Uh, make sure there's no cuts. That seems fine. Okay. So now I'm going to, what I'm going to teach you, how to fix the wrong resolution. So you have your gameplay here, right? You have your gameplay. So I've told you that you need to have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, but what if you don't have that? What if your clip looks like this and the aspect ratio is different to 16 by 9 and it's not filling the screen? You've got black bars on either side. Well, in this tutorial, I'm also going to show you how to fix these black bars with a really cool effect. So what you can do is I state just the video part of the clip, not the audio. You can do that by holding Alt and clicking. So instead of holding Alt, this happens. But if you hold Alt and then click, it only selects uh, the specific track that you are wanting to select and now you're going to hold alt and drag upwards That's going to copy it. So now you have two versions of the same clip You can see if I go over here and hide the top layer the bottom layer is still there So now we have two layers and now I'm going to take the first one the one underneath I'm going to go to these attributes in the inspector tab here. You can turn it on and off This is basically all the attributes that you can change uh, like size position rotation all of that I'm going to go to zoom and I'm going to just drag it up until it fills the screen. Now you might think it looks a bit weird, but what are we going to do? We're going to go down to open effects down here. If you don't see that, you can just click effects library and this should come up. Gaussian blur, drag it on to the bottom clip. Now you're going to see a new tab has opened up here called open effects. That's come up because we have added an effect from open effects onto the clip and you can see the background is starting to blur now the edge looks weird but we can fix that by selecting replicate instead of black and let's make it blur a bit stronger maybe there here why not and now you can see we have fixed we have fixed the size of this with this really cool blur effect uh, what i'm going to teach you now syncing so i am going to Press Alt, I'm going to hold Alt and scroll to zoom in and out the timeline. You can also use this slider up here, very convenient. And I'm going to sync up the audio. Now, what I did was I activated both audio tracks to listen to my voice. I clapped three times and then I deactivated my voice from the background audio. So for the game audio right here, you can see. Right, uh, okay, how do I... That was me clapping three times, but on my face cam, that same moment comes a lot later on, as you can see. So I'm just going to drag the gameplay to match. I'm going to alt scroll in to make that a bit more precise. There we go. And it doesn't have to be as distinct as three claps. You, it's pretty easy to sync up with anything if you just look at the waveforms and compare them. So um, what I did was a bit weird. I recorded my intro and then I started recording the background gameplay. So my intro looks like this. Hello everyone, how? Now I don't want that bit at the beginning, that empty, that uh, silent space. So right before I say hello, I'm gonna press control button next to the Z and I've just clipped that oh. there. I'm gonna select this and press delete so that I ripple deletes. Hello everyone. So now it looks like this. And now I can fade in by dragging this white box in the corner to the right. Hello everyone. And now it's faded in. You can also do that for audio. You can make it go from quiet to loud. Hello everyone. But I tend not to do that. I'm going to control Z real quick. Now I know that my face cam and gameplay are synced. I can make cuts. So for example, I could get rid of the bit where I was syncing up or I could get rid of a much larger chunk. So I'm just going to do that. Now we're in gameplay video. Now right there, just control button next to the Z. Oh, uh, okay. This is when I start playing the actual game. So I'm going to control button next to the Z. Um, all of this, all of this right here was just me calibrating my screen. So that's, uh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to get rid of all that, get rid of all that. And as you can see now, almost like what you plan. Hello. Yeah, every sometimes my playhead just goes all over the place. It can, it can just teleport where I don't want it to go. See, look, look, it's just teleported. Like, what's that? Anyways, I'm going to drag it to the start. Like, I'm so bad. See? I'm gonna drag it to the start. I can guarantee you something's all man. Hello is. everyone, how are you doing? Today I have got a Valorant gameplay video. Ooh, uh, uh. 
All right, so now you can see there's a bit of a problem. You can't see the gameplay because my face cam is filling the whole screen. How can we solve that? Well, 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 we can just go down here to crop in. If you don't see this, then you can just double click the box. It took me a while to figure that one out. First of all, make it smaller, make the box smaller, maybe 0.34. Just wait for that. There we go. And uh, that's looking pretty good. I'm just going to not crop left yet. I'm going to change the position attribute. I'm going to change position X to be at the edge there. I'm going to change position Y to be at the top there. I'm going to crop right. And that looks pretty cool. I'm like in that position. Now, let's play it back. Gameplay video. Oh, oh. Uh, uh. And now you can see, you might think that transition is a bit sudden. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to animate now using keyframes. Now, if you don't know what a keyframe is, basically a marker to change an attribute. For example, if you have an image of a square and the size is, let's say, 10, right? 10, well, I don't know, 10 units, right? And uh, you want to make it 20 units, but you don't want it to just, you know, cut from 10 to 20. You want it to, you want to see it getting bigger, right? That's what she said. But um, you're going to make a keyframe at size 10. And then, let's say, five seconds later, you're going to create a keyframe at size 20. And then over those five seconds, you will see visually on the screen, the square gets bigger from size 10 to size 20. So that's what keyframes are in a nutshell. Uh, since I already have my final point, the square being size 20, let's say, if we're sticking to that um, metaphor, then I can choose a point in this clip near the beginning. I can create a keyframe by pressing this diamond. I'll create one on the zoom, which is the size, uh, position, and also crop right. Now, since this is the end result, I'm going to go back a few frames, and I'm going to go to what this originally was. So zoom, it was one, position was zero, zero, crop was zero. So now it looks like this. Ooh, ah, uh, uh, ooh, ah. Uh. So you can see that it's pretty quick, but I can change the duration of the animation by clicking this keyframe button at the side and dragging these keyframes like so. The further apart they are, the more time it takes for the transition to take place, so the longer the animation. So if I play this you, back, ooh, ah, up, you, ooh, ah. there we go. And if I make it even longer, you can see it's going to take a ooh, long, ah, long time. Up. And if I make it really short, the animation is going to be pretty quick. Ooh, ooh, ah. Like that. I think about there should be fine. Ooh, uh, uh. Yep, that looks alright, that looks alright. And there we have it. You now know how to animate pretty much anything in DaVinci Resolve. Be creative. Okay, now we have the start of the video done. We're going to go all the way to the end of the video right here. And we're going to finish the video. Uh, let's see how we can end it. So I'm going to play it back. Be better, but um, see you later. So I've said see you later. I'm going to make sure nothing's selected. Control button next to the Z and that cuts through all the clips. I'm going to highlight all this, press backspace or delete, it doesn't matter because it's the end of the clip. And now I could drag this white box here to the left to fade out. See you later. But now you can see that's only applied to my face cam, not the whole thing. So I'm going to control Z that real quick. Um, what I can do is if I cut by pressing control Z and then I try to say select and highlight at the same time, select all these clips, right click and new compound clip. So I'm creating a compound clip, which is the same as nesting in Premiere Pro. Uh, I basically converted all four of those clips into one video and one audio, which now it's one thing. You can see the face cam and the gameplay are combined in one clip. I am going to just fade out like so. See you later. And now the whole thing right. is faded out. Or if I wanted, but, um, see you later. I could make it so that when I say see you later, it changes so my face cam is filling the screen. So I'm going to control Z over that. Um, I'm going to go to where I start saying see you later. I'm going to cut there. I'm going to uh, press this button here, which resets to the original um, attributes. And beware, when you click that, it gets rid of your keyframes. In Premiere Pro, that's not the case, so it can get pretty confusing. You could lose a whole bunch of keyframes. But just bear in mind, if you reset the attributes to what they were, it gets rid of the keyframes. And now you've got this. See you later. And now I can do the same thing again. I'm going to create that compound clip again and fade out. Be better, but um, see you later. And now that is the end of the video. We've got the start done, we've got the end done, and that is the most basic form of video editing. You know, you can just cut like, oh, I don't want this bit to be in the video, so I'm just gonna highlight, get rid of that. You can do that, get rid of it you don't want. That could be your video done, but 
I'm not gonna leave you there. I'm not gonna have you being some basic gaming YouTuber. I'm just gonna get rid of this that section there by clicking keyframe. It was getting a bit annoying. You ain't gonna be no basic YouTuber. You're gonna be the best gaming YouTuber the world has ever seen. I'm gonna teach you how to do effects. That's right, effects. Now, let me go to a place where I wanna put effects. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Right, okay, run, run away. Oh, hello. So I died there, I can put effects on that. Oh. So I'm just gonna drag to before I start talking. Control button next to the Z, and then. And then here, while I'm dying, right? Uh, for this, I think I'm gonna go to my gameplay clip right here. I'm gonna change the zoom attribute to zoom into that, so it looks like. Oh my. Uh, I'm gonna take this clip. I'm gonna hop into the color tab right here, and the color tab might look confusing. You've got this box here. You've got this graph. You've got this. You've got this. You know, um, yeah, you might be confused, but we're just gonna focus on these color wheels. So it's currently selected my face. I'm gonna go over to the clip that I actually want the effect to be on. I'm just gonna drag it. I don't know all the way over to the red. See how that looks. Oh my. That looks pretty good. So it's zoomed in, it's gone red. Now I'm gonna go to my bank of sound effects and I'm just gonna drag in some random sound effects from here. So maybe the Roblox death sound. Yep, that works. Okay, so I've got the Roblox death sound there. I'm also gonna add in, uh, sure, why not, why not, okay? So I've got this right here. It's really loud as you can see from the waveform. So I'm not even gonna listen to it. I'm gonna turn the volume down and then listen to it. I'm gonna solo this track so it's just this audio playing. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna zoom in right there, go to where it starts being very epic, very dank if I do say so myself. And then I'm gonna go over to this clip. So this is where I want the audio to be. And then I have to add another um, audio track. So I want that below audio three. There we go. So I'm going to move the Roblox, there we go. I'm going to move this audio now, so it sounds like this. Beautiful, I'm going to press B and then get rid of that by pressing backspace. I'm going to drag the Roblox sound over. Oh, I forgot I've got this soloed, so I can't hear anything else, so. Hello. Oh. Oh. All right, that oof is a bit loud, so um, I could change the volume by going up to this attribute volume here, or I could uh, hover my mouse over the clip until I see these two arrows and drag up or down. I'm just going to drag down. Oh, that looks good. I'm just going to drag in to match this clip just for visual convenience. Hello. Oh. Actually, I'm going to make that oof a bit louder. And the Playboy caught you a bit louder. Oh my. Bit too loud. I'm just gonna. Oh my. Perfect, perfect. There we go. And that is a simple edit done. I could um, do the same for my face cam, you know? So I could just, if I wanted anyways, my face anyways. cam to just, you know, randomly get bigger because I'm reacting to someone, I could uh, just clip it here because I, I don't want my face cam to remain big for the entire clip. I could just create some good old zoom and position keyframes. I could go forward by pressing the right arrow key. Could go forward a little bit yeah. like that. And then I could change the zoom to be bigger like this. So it looks Yeah, like you can't diffuse like it. That. Like I'm just going to bring them closer together so it's a bit quicker. Yeah, you can't diffuse Yeah, you can't diffuse it. We'll go on. And then maybe when it says... Yeah, you can't diffuse it. When I say with one, I can clip that again. I can revert to the original attributes. And then I could go into colour, let's say. And I could make it green. Or I could go down to saturation, turn it to zero to make it black and white. So now it looks like this. Yeah, you can't diffuse it with one. Yeah. See? Easy. Easy peasy squeezy make man just like Houdini. I'm very sorry. Um, now, the final thing I'm going to teach you is just background music if you want it. It's optional, you know. If it's a game that's really audio dependent, maybe you might not want it. But I'm just going to go back here to background music. Let's just bring in this right here. This is what I'm using for my videos nowadays. Uh, I'm just going to 
lower the audio levels right there. Like the number. Oh, see, playheads going mad guy. again. Playheads going crazy. Hello, playheads everyone. Going. How are you doing? Today, yeah, I have the, got a Valorant a gameplay video. Oh, uh, okay, I'm not even close to any. Right, the frame's a little bit off, but it's fine. Okay, I'll be distracted. So, maybe I just want a specific section of this audio, like I want it to start here. I can drag it along, I can fade it in, so now we have this. Hello everyone, how are you doing? Today, I have got a Valorant gameplay video. Oh, uh, okay, I'm not even... And then obviously if there's a funny moment where I want the audio to stop, for example, where we made that edit, let's say that the music continues here, and uh, oh no, I've just gone over the uh, the edited clips, so let's not do that this time. I'm going to have to create another um, audio track. So let's say that this uh, song, this background music, oh is playing here, like this. Right, okay, run, run away. Oh, hello. Oh, oh my god. And now, you know, for just for comedic effect, you could cut it there and drag it to the end of the edit, so it looks like this. Oh, hello. Oh my gosh, right, okay, we'll run anyways, it's gonna explode. We'll run anyways, we'll run anyways. Yeah, you can't defuse it, we'll run. Yeah. And now the music, you know, starts playing again. So for funny moments or moments you want to dramatise, you could do that. That is pretty much all the effects you'll need to know. If you want to make audio sound a certain way, you could hop into Fairlight, which is basically just audio, um, mess around with audio. It's a bit like, uh, Audition, Adobe Audition. You can just, you know, highlight random, you know, hi highlight a clip. This is where I said, one. with one. Right, you could go into um, effects library, you can drag in, I don't know, distortion, why not? Drag in a bit of distortion, distort the thing, let's see how that sounds. I didn't have to go into edit, but... Yeah, you can't defuse it. Go on. Beautiful, you know, maybe you want to make a distortion. Oh no. And uh, that is pretty much it. Now, um, I don't know when I realised that my camera stopped recording, but it did. So uh, I'm just going to have my voice from now on. You're not going to be able to see my face, boohoo. Go on to deliver down here, the final tab. This is for when you are done with your entire edit, you're happy with your video, you want the world to see it. Now, this is going to render it out, so that means it's going to convert it from just a file that only Resolve can read, just a project file, into a video format that is universally readable by all video players. So we're going to go to Browse up here, do not click any of these presets by the way, always go Custom over here. I'm going to save it to, yeah, here, why not, I'm going to say, please don't crash, I, I don't know. Save that, and now we're going to make sure that it's rendering a single clip. Make sure that the audio is ticked to export, the video is ticked to export. Format, MP4, codec, um, the only thing you can choose is H.264, it's a great codec. Um, resolution, we already set this in the project settings. Frame rate, you don't need to worry about these. Quality, we're going to restrict it to 12,000. This is only for YouTube by the way, um, I don't know whether that's highly beneficial, I just saw it in a video on how to render stuff, but yeah. Uh, everything else looks fine. We're going to add to render queue and we're just going to start the render. Now, once this is done rendering, you will have yourself an MP4 file, a video file that you can upload to anywhere you want. Start off your thriving gaming channel. I'm just going to stop that because I don't actually want this to render. But yeah, that is your video tutorial complete. I don't have a face to do my outro, so you're just going to listen to us do it. Um, thank you very much for watching and I will hope to see you all in the next video.